So it started with a conversation with my new PGCE student Zoe White about the teaching of longshore drift to our GCSE pupils and how we would go from taking that general schematic of longshore drift and help the pupils take that into the real world to demonstrate that they understand it not just when it's presented in the form that we first presented it to them but they can take their understanding and apply it elsewhere. The fundamental concept of longshore drift of course is up at an angle, back down straight up at an angle, back down straight, no problem. Until you take that simple schematic and, and bring it into a little bit more of the complexity of the real world. Up at an angle, back down straight, hold on a minute. Straight? That's not straight. Let me show you a back down straight line. That's back down straight. That's back down at an angle again. Mm -hmm. They have a point, don't they? So there's a job of work to be done between the translation of that general principle to something seen from a completely new point of view and how they can then appreciate that they're both showing the same thing. So how do we do that? Well, of course, it was time to break out ArcGIS Scene Viewer. Let's take a look at how we used it. Now we could of course have produced a Google Slides and had images looking at it from a different point of view and toggled between them and said can you see it, can you see it? But why do that whenever you've got something as powerful as Scene Viewer here? And I think what you'll see as we go through this is how much more versatile this is than a static PowerPoint. We'll pick the location just down the east coast of England where there's a lot of longshore drift and a photograph like this begins to start some conversations about what the pupils can see. So their wave crests are clearly here and those wave crests are approaching the beach at an angle. So what we can do is show the pupils where those wave crests are and let them see that they are at an angle to this beach. Now, at an angle. Now, when you're looking at this from an oblique view like this, it can be difficult to visualize that. So why don't we swing that around to something that looks an awful lot more like what you'd see in the schematic in a textbook. Here we can see the wave crest approaching at an angle. There is the straightness of the beach. Up at an angle, back down, straight. Up at an angle, back down, straight. Up at an angle, back down, straight. And we can see the similarity with that and the schematic. But we can then look at this from an angle. And we can change this point of view. We can move around. And you can, of course, give this to the pupils to discover and explore for themselves to really get a sense of this, to go from the more head-on point of view to something from the side. They can explore it from all sorts of different shapes and angles in order to understand the nature of the shape and what this is like. And in some ways it reminds me of whenever my kids were younger when they did that little game where they had to put the blocks, the different shaped size blocks into different holes in a, a cube. Um, and it was all about helping them to explore shapes in three dimensions and from different points of view and to realize how you need to orientate this particular shape to get it into that particular um, location and this is I think allowing us to do something similar to go from that very very simple schematic point of view to seeing what this looks like in the real world and then we can take it further in terms of applying it into the real world because we can come just down the coast a little bit to where there is a groin this groin, of course, we can tell them is designed to trap the sediment, to stop it from moving down, and to um, maintain the beach in that location to protect the infrastructure behind. So we can come to this point of view here and see it from above. And we can ask them, what, what evidence are you seeing here that longshore drift is happening? Well, again, here are the angles. There's the angle of the coastline. There is the angle of the approaching wave. So up at an angle, back down, straight. Up at an angle, back down straight, and so on and so forth. But we can ask them then, are there any other bits of evidence here as we look around? Anything else that's demonstrating to us that we are seeing a movement of sand from here over to here? I wonder, can you see it? There it is. Now you could do this with PowerPoint, of course. But here's what you can't do with PowerPoint. <laughs> what you can't do with PowerPoint is then zoom in and take a closer look. 
And what you can't do with PowerPoint is come over to this Analyze tool and measure the height difference from this side of the groin to this side of the groin. Hypothesis. If the longshore drift is happening from this direction to this direction, and if it is building up on this side of the groin, then the height of the sand will be higher here and lower here. So we click some data and see if that's the case. So we click and we drag. And lo and behold, there is the horizontal distance that we've gone. We've traveled 30 meters and we've dropped down by 65 centimeters. There's the difference in the height. You can try it up here. Let's see what we get. We get a drop down here of over that 30 meters 1.82 meters. There is most definitely a build up of sediment here as it's trapped by the groin. And you can see that in operation in the real world. So we have gone from what would be perhaps a static schematic, uh, looking from above of what longshore drift looks like, to something of it in operation in the real world. Whenever you see the impact that that has on this particular groin. And having done that once with them, why don't we travel a little bit further to the south? Let's head down to North Norfolk and to Cromer. And what you can then do is something I love to do with the pupils when they've done something like this is hypothesis testing. So you go and grab some data because Cromer is protected by a series of groins. Um, there is high value land here and they need to be protected. So what you could do here is just take a series of measurements between the groins and see what is happening to the height. You can get them to go and collect a whole range of different pieces of data here. They could plot this into a spreadsheet and they could start to see the impacts that the groins are having here. Are the groins trapping the sediment? Are they causing the sediment to build up here at this side? of the groin and you can see here all of these different vertical measurements that they could collect um, survey site after survey site bringing this material into a spreadsheet and analyzing it later seeing how these processes operate in the real world so from the schematic from the simple aerial view to exploring things in detail in the real world courtesy of a click of a few slides in scene viewer. That's definitely adding a little bit more value than a simple PowerPoint now, isn't it?